Literally no one asked me to vlog, so I decided to do it all month long. You'll see me live my life every day of March, so get ready to be bored, cause this is Vlarch. Down, down, we're going down, 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 we're going down the stairs. Down, down, the stairs. down. you got crazy down, hair. Down, 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 we're going down the stairs. Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Hello, everybody. So, I saw this thing on TikTok. How many times a day do I say that phrase? The answer is probably a thousand. But I did. I saw this thing on TikTok that I'm gonna try. Oof, she's looking rough on this fine Saturday morning, honey. Then you wanna come try this with me? So, I saw Lizzo. Yeah? Come on up on this chair. I saw Lizzo on TikTok eating Look at that truck. nature's cereal. Look at, that truck. Look at that truck. Can you put the little trucks in the big truck? And it's basically pomegranate seeds, blueberries, strawberries, no, and, and coconut water. And that's it. And everyone's eating it now on TikTok and saying it's like amazing. And I'm like, it's literally fruit and water. Like, what's amazing? So I really want to try it. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. How is it? I don't like it. You don't like it? I made a TikTok mm. and in it I try it and I go, hmm, it's just fruit and water. Uh-uh, guys. Look at it. Thank you, Dada. So I try it and it's good, but it's literally, it's just fruit and coconut water. I don't know why everyone's freaking out about it. It's like they've never eaten fruit, but he watched me make the TikTok and he watched me go, hmm. Eh. It's just fruit and water. So he loves it, because he loves fruit. But now every time he takes a bite, he goes, hmm, hmm, mm, blah, 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 Because that's what he says of water. Lynn, taste it. How is it? What's in here? That's a pomegranate. Yeah. Baby like it. Baby like it? <laughs> is it good? Yeah. He's never had a pomegranate before. It's red. Yeah, it is red. What do you think? Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it good? Yeah. I started Mom, filming wait. after he'd been Mom, doing it for 10 minutes. This one. Okay, I'll be this one. Gotta go be a dump truck. Oh, hey, what's up? I spilled. You spilled. Did you have any fruit and water? Me. Come on, hit the dump truck. Okay. There's your other one. There's another one. Did you want any more of this? You're all done. I'm done. Okay. Fruit and water. <laughs> Guys, I think it's mental breakdown day, so I think it's bang day. I think I'm gonna cut bangs today because I'm having a mental breakdown. I usually talk about like my mental health and what I'm going through at the end of videos. So if you like my like late night chats, then stick around. If you don't, you might want to skip forward to like this time code when I'm back to like just playing with Flynn and being a maniac. I am fine. I'm not like sad or whatever. I'm fine, but I'm just going through something and I just feel like I need to go back to therapy. I haven't been in a while because my sleeping habits are so bad, so bad. Y'all know, like, I have merch that says no sleep club. Like, I'm really bad at sleeping. I have insomnia. I was doing research on it and, like, why is it that I, like, literally cannot fall asleep at night? And I've always thought it was, like, anxiety. But as some of you know, I was diagnosed with ADHD last year. And the more I learn about ADHD, the more I'm like, oh my gosh. What the heck? There's this thing called like sleep, uh, revenge, something. I don't remember what it's called. But basically, like, you're so overstimulated all day. And so then at night, it's your only time where it's just you by yourself. And it's your only time where everyone else is asleep and there's no distractions. And so you can just, like, have your me time for a couple hours. And, like, no one can bother you. No one can talk to you. Like, it's, and the only time that happens for me is from the hours of, like, midnight to three. I'm not saying that like Flynn and Eric bug me or bother me or annoy me during the day. That's not it at all. And I honestly, I don't want that alone time during the day. Like if, cause Eric has said to me multiple times, like if you need time, like take it, I'll take Flynn out of the house and we can, like he's, he's totally willing and offered that multiple times to me. So it's not that he has not offered that. It's that when I'm awake and they're awake and they're around, like I want to be around them. Like I want to hang out with Eric. I want to hang out with Corey. I want to hang out with Flynn. I want to hang out with my family. Like I want to be around people. I want to be stimulated and hanging out all day long. But then when nighttime comes, I'm like, it's like my brain knows I need that alone time, but like I'm not willing to give it to myself during the day. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense. But then also, so last night I was like, I have to go to bed earlier. 
I have so much work to do today, so I wanted to get some rest. So I put my phone down at like two and I tried to fall asleep. When I didn't have the distraction of my phone, my mind got even more active and started thinking even more and like I had all these thoughts that just would not shut up and so then I got back on my phone thinking it would make me tired and it helped a little so then like at like 3 or 3 30 I put my phone back down and then I was awake for another like hour or two just like and I was tired it wasn't that I wasn't tired I was tired but my brain wouldn't turn off so I'm just like imagining all these scenarios and oh I forgot to do this day oh I have to do this tomorrow I'm gonna do this tomorrow oh I need to do this day and I forgot to do this oh what about this oh what if I did this next week oh I should buy this I, I need to go to this my brain just doesn't shut up and so then I can't sleep when I put my phone down last night to try to sleep it caused me to I have to have something going on with my hands all the time which is why sometimes I'll have like fidget toys which don't work too well for me but sometimes I do I need to be doing something at all times which I learned from my therapist last year um, and my doctor that that is from ADHD that's why I've done it my whole life like boys typically are diagnosed with ADHD at a young age because they seem hyperactive or whatever and girls are not because they learn to mask their issues. How I masked it as a kid, and it's very common in people with ADHD, I guess. I'm not a doctor, but this is just what I've learned. BFRBs, which is repetitive body focused behaviors, like my dermatillomania, are from uh, ADHD. And so when I don't have my phone like to look at or something with my hands, like what's so why I like to edit all day or be playing and doing crafts or baking, like I have to be doing something at all times, that's when I start like really going at it and like ripping out my skin and I did it so bad last night it's so frustrating because it's never gotten better <laughs> it's only gotten worse and it was manageable before the pandemic like before the pandemic I always did it like you can go back and watch videos of me from freaking eight years ago and you'll see like my fingers are gross and like you know I've, I've always done it I remember doing it in high school I remember doing it in elementary school it was never that bad though it was just like Oh, people pick at their skin, who cares? Since the pandemic, it's just so freaking bad. Through therapy, through everything I've tried, like it just does not get better. And it's so freaking frustrating. And last night it was so bad. And so, oh, bye. Yes, my camera was like, girl, we've all heard you talk about this too much. No one cares. Um, I agree. I agree. I, I think it's annoying when I talk about it. Camera, okay? I'm annoyed with myself. <sighs> So I'm not like sad, I'm not feeling depressed, I'm not feeling like anything like that. I'm just like frustrated that I don't sleep well. And I've read comments from people be like, if you have insomnia, you just take medication. Like, why aren't you just taking medication? Where now? And I'm totally for medication. Like, I am on medication for other things. So like, I'm not against medication, but the issue is that I don't want to take medication to help me sleep because I wake up with my son at 6 a.m. And nighttime is when I get most of my work done because during the day I'm being a mom. I work the most at night. And so I can't take sleeping medication. I wouldn't be able to take it till like, mm, like one in the morning, midnight. And if he wakes up at six, I'm afraid I'll be so groggy from taking something, like even Advil PM, like I don't wanna take anything that could make me groggy because at six I need to be awake because if I'm groggy and like stay asleep and he wakes up, he's two, like that's dangerous. And so I don't know what the solution is. <laughs> I've tried so many different things, but I have to work at night. So people are like, well, just go to bed earlier. Well, my brain doesn't turn off, so that's not an option. And, and even if it was, even if I trained my brain to go better earlier and earlier and earlier, like then I wouldn't be able to get any work done. I'm already behind on my work. <laughs> so this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. Um, I'm just having a hard time and I have so much work to do today. And because I have so much work to do, because of my ADHD brain and how it works, because there's so much work to do, I'm overwhelmed by it. And so I've just been ignoring it all day, which is so stupid because now it's 2.15 and I should have been doing it since 9 a.m. this morning, but instead now it's 2.15 and I can't make myself do it. Very frustrated. Very frustrated. I don't like the way my brain works right now. Usually I do like it. Like. <laughs> I don't wanna give off bad vibes about having ADHD or having a brain that's like different because I think those things make us special and unique and like I would not have haters back off or like, you know, all the fun things I've been able to do in my life if my brain were different. If my brain was not ADHD and creative and different and think differently, I wouldn't be who I am. So I love that about myself, but there are sometimes it's frustrating and it's not just like, oh, I'm so hyper. Like that's not what ADHD is. It is so frustrating when you get in these like, these things of like, when you're so overwhelmed with all the things that you can't do any of the things, it's so frustrating. And I heard the best analogy 
someone said when you have ADHD it's like you know how if you can bite a carrot and eat a carrot we have the strength because we're able to like bite a whole big carrot we could do that to our finger we could literally bite hard enough and crack your finger we're capable of doing that as human beings but i can't do it because my brain is going to tell me to stop there's it is impossible literally impossible for you to bite on your finger and break it to yourself like you cannot bite your own finger because your brain is going to stop you from doing that even though you physically are capable of doing it you can't do it because your brain will not let you do it and someone was like that is what it's like to have adhd so when when you get overwhelmed in those moments so it's like when you're overwhelmed with all this work or with you know the house is a mess and you need to clean it or there are all these tasks you need to do or all these emails you need to respond to and it gets overwhelming sometimes your brain will just go like i i can't do that i ref i will not let you do that you're not going to do it like it is in the same it feels the same as like my brain physically will not let me actually bite off my finger that's what it feels like my brain does sometimes when i need to get work done and i never used to have this problem because my work used to stimulate me so much and the issue with people with ADHD is your dopamine levels are off. And so because my life was so crazy and hectic and I would travel to new places every week and go to meetings and do different projects all the time, everything was so stimulating. I never really felt this way before, except for in school. I felt this way in school. Since school, since I graduated college, I never felt that way again because I had so many different weird jobs. But now that I've been in my home for a year and the only job I have is YouTube, which I love, I'm not complaining about it, but there's nothing new and different that's like stimulating me and giving me that dopamine, then I just get like overwhelmed sometimes and I'm like, I can't, I physically can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Like I, and I shut down. So that's how I'm feeling today and it's really frustrating. I'm talking about this because I wanted to express how I'm feeling, but also I wanted to say it out loud to you right now. I am gonna go upstairs right now and I'm going to put on the Miranda clothes and I'm going to film Miranda videos that I've been thinking about filming for like a week. I'm gonna do it right now, right when I push this button that turns off the recording. I'm gonna do it. I don't want to, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay. By the way, this is not me procrastinating. I do want to make Miranda videos. I like playing Miranda. I think it's really fun. I think Miranda videos are fun, but I don't want to do anything right now. I want to lay down on this messy bed, this couch bed, and look at my phone, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay guys, here I am, dressed like Miranda, about to film, and Flynn just woke up from his nap. Like, he was only asleep for like 45 minutes. And this is why it's so hard for me. Not his fault, he's amazing. It's it's because I just, I like hanging out with him, I like being around him, so it's hard when he's awake, I'm like, I just wanna play with him. So Eric's hanging out with him so that I can get some work done, so here I am, dressed like Miranda. Let's do somebody else. I'm doing it. Are we proud of me? We're proud of me. Taking a break to give Flynn a little bit. From one of you, someone sent it in the PO box. Flynn, do you want a pet turtle? Do you want a little turtle? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Which hand? <gasps> two, two turtles! Two baby turtles! Two little baby turtles. I need a dada dog, dada turtle. You need a dada turtle? Yeah. I don't know where the dada turtles are. Where's Titi? Maybe Titi's the dada turtle. Or Splash, maybe Splash is the dada turtle? Yep. And those are the baby turtles? I have last night, they three ducks. There was a mama duck and a dada. Mm. Do you need one more to be the dada? Should I go, I have one more. Do you want one more? Yeah. Okay, I'll go get you one more to be the dada. Okay, I posted a TikTok as Miranda. I, by the way, I filmed a video. I'm so proud of myself. I filmed a couple TikToks. I should film another one. Maybe we'll see. I, I filmed a TikTok the other day. I actually put it, it was a YouTube video where I did the Christian or clean version of um, Ariana Grande song 3435. And I changed all the lyrics to be like religious. And I do that all the time as Miranda. Like Miranda's, um, all, since the beginning of Miranda, it's always been a very conservative religious character. And I always pull from my own personal experiences because I went to a very conservative university that was extremely religious so I only pull from my own experiences it's interesting because I've always done it and they always go over well but this one it was fine on YouTube but on TikTok I got comments of people saying that it was blasphemous and inappropriate and how dare I make fun of religion I took it too far and I was like wait what what where did I make fun of religion I was so confused because I feel like I'm always very careful when I do religious stuff as Miranda I try to not take it too far because I do love and appreciate religion so much and I I, I love what it does for people and 
and how it helps them and changes them and, and makes them want to be better people. I, I think religion can also be do the opposite. I think people can use it to be evil, but I also see the beauty of it. I love and respect it so much for that. And so I always try to be really careful. And so I never, I try to never make fun of religion in general. I try to make fun of my personal experiences and things I did and I said when I was at a point in my life where I was I feel a little brainwashed. Um, I was super, super religious, but also very judgy. Like I was judgmental and hypocritical and super religious, but like only in the ways that it benefited my life. Does that make sense? Like I, I had a phase of life in college where I was like that. So that's the time of life where I'm like, oh, the person that I was then was like, Ugh. so when I, I'm making fun of me in a time of life where I didn't really like who I was when I look back on it and I can laugh at that now. And this is how I laugh at myself is through making fun of it with Miranda. I've never really gotten much slack for it in the past because I've always been like, well, I'm not making fun of religion because I'm making fun of myself and I actually love and appreciate religion a lot. I'm, you know, I'm not making fun of it at all. And so I went and looked at the lyrics and the lyrics are all fine to me. They're all just facts. It's like, you know, I'm a Christian, the way I've been living, I'm forgiven, I'm going to heaven. What are you doing tonight? You better be praying all night, reading our Bibles. We ain't gonna sin tonight. Like it's all like just factual lyrics about how it is when you're religious. And so I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I went and I looked in the comments and people said, um, there's one lyric where I say, you can't date me love because I'm dating Jesus love. He's my savior. He's my father. He's my boyfriend. He's all these things. So I read the the comments and people were saying dating Jesus is saying you are dating Jesus or he's your boyfriend is blasphemous. This blew my mind. Like that was not to me, that wasn't a crazy blasphemous thing to say because when I went to school, I went to a religious private Christian university. All the girls said that. That was a, a seriously, like I said it. That I have my prayer journal somewhere in this room. I could find it and I'm sure I could find pages where I said, I'm dating Jesus right now. I'm not focused on boys, I'm dating Jesus Christ. That is something we said all the time. We were taught to say this, like you, and the reason is because dating is getting to know someone. So we were taught in chapel, like you date Jesus and you get to know him and he gets to know you and you give him your heart. And then after dating Jesus, once he feels you're ready, he will bring you the man you're supposed to marry. And then you, you still are with Jesus. You don't break up with Jesus, but then essentially you are with this other man. And that's why we had promise rings. I wore a promise ring and it meant I was promised to Jesus Christ until I was married. So we would say, I'm dating Jesus. Like, sorry, I'm not interested. I'm, I have a boyfriend and it's Jesus Christ. Like we said this all the time. So this to me was just as common as saying like, I'm reading my Bible. I'm going to chapel. I'm going to, you know, youth group, or I'm, I'm going to Bible study. I'm dating Jesus. These were all very common things. So when I read people were like, I'm so offended that you said I'm dating Jesus. I was like, does not everyone say that when they're like super religious? Like that was something that we all said. Like, and so I text Corey and I was like, wait, I'm so confused. Like, is this a, an offensive thing to say? Because I said this all the time in college. Like I'm confused. Like people are offended that I, as Marina said, I'm dating Jesus, but like, this is something like I literally used to say all the time. And he said, no, I remember because he went to the same school as me. He said, I remember a chapel speaker literally said, let Jesus break your hymen. This is true. We had chapel speakers who came to speak three times a week. We had to go to chapel three times a week. We'd have different like guest speakers come and some of them were really great. And some of them spouted off things that stuck in our heads that we had to unlearn. And one of them was that like, let Jesus break your hymen. Jesus needs to be the one to take your virginity. I remember this chapel speaker. And so when I say things that seem maybe ridiculous to you when I'm being religious as Miranda, like I'm the Virgin Mary or I'm dating Jesus. It's not me being like, what's the craziest, meanest thing I could say to make fun of Christians. It's me going, what is something I did when I was a super uh, religious conservative person that now I look at and go, oh, well, that was a bit extreme. And how can I make fun of myself? from that time period. I'm making fun of me and things that I said. I don't know anyone out, any of you in whatever religion you pr practice. I'm not living your experience. I've only lived mine. I'm not making fun of you and your religion and your experience. I respect you and your religion and your religious experience. And I appreciate what it does for you and how it has helped you and, and 
how important it is to you. That means a lot to me because it meant a lot to me. Religion has helped me through so many things. You know, God or whatever you believe to be a God or your God, my God, whatever, has helped me through so many things. And so I'm not making fun of religion as a whole. I'm not making fun of Christianity. I'm making fun of me and my experiences and things that I said and that I did that now I look on and I'm like, what was I doing? Like I used to call Jesus daddy. Like I used to write in my diary, dear daddy, I love you so much. And then I, at the same time, call my boyfriend. Like these are things I actually did seriously and everyone did. So anyway, my point is if you were offended by me saying that and you think I was just trying to come up with something gross and offensive, I wasn't trying to come up with something gross and offensive. I was writing a song that was supposed to be like Christian lyrics. And I was just thinking of things that were Christian lyrics, things I would have written when I was at my private Christian university into a song that I lived in were my personal experience. That's what I was doing. Wasn't making fun of you and your religion. But that was so shocking to me. Like that like blew my mind. I was like, wait, did not everyone, like if you are a Christian, can you please tell me in the comments below, is that something you ever heard? Or is that just at my school? Like, because now my mind is kind of blown. Like did not everyone say that? I thought all like young Christian girls were taught to say that, like I'm dating Jesus. Tell me, cause now I'm really curious. Like if you are religious in any form, is that something you were ever taught to say? Because now I just feel like totally crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, is that something that I was like brainwashed to think was normal, but it wasn't normal? Cause now people are saying that that was offensive. And I'm like, whoa, what? Like of all the things I've done as Miranda, which I've done a lot of offensive things I feel as Miranda, that one thing I was like, that's not offensive. That's something everyone does. Like what? So I'm very confused. Um, and the other thing is as Miranda, I like to poke fun at and bring light to things that I think are ridiculous. I've always said that. Miranda is not supposed to be someone who does everything politically correct. She's not the character that is smart or is sensitive to other people's feelings. Like she's a jerk. And I also use the character to say and do things that I think are ridiculous. I don't think Christianity is ridiculous. I think the way that I lived it for a while was ridiculous. And the things I said for a while were kind of ridiculous. And so I like to poke fun at myself and how I lived when I was living that way. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm making fun of the ridiculous things I thought and felt when I was um, super religious. But anyway, I'm just rambling now and I feel like now this is just gonna make open up a big can of worms. It's not like it was that big of a deal. I just saw a pretty big chunk of comments that were saying that that was offensive. So I just wanted to ask the question, did you guys say this? If you are religious or were religious and you are my age-ish, did you ever say that? Is that not a thing people say? Wow, my mind is kind of blown. I'm very curious to read the comments of this video. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go. You guys are a bunch of bullies. Because at the beginning of the day, I said, I'm gonna cut bangs, I'm doing it today. Cause look at this honkin forehead. Look at it. It doesn't deserve to be seen by the light of day. It needs to be hidden. And the curtain bangs don't cut it. They just don't do it for me. And I tweeted that I was gonna cut bangs. And you know, whenever I talk about how like, you guys bullying me about these bangs, I then suddenly get comments and tweets from everyone that are like, just do it. You look beautiful no matter what. We support you whenever I say I'm bullied. But today I didn't mention anything about being bullied. I just said, I think I'm gonna cut bangs. And everyone's like, don't do it. It will look ugly. And I'm like, Ugh. Right when I was feeling it, I was really like, I was gonna do it today. And then you guys can just come on in here and bully me once again. I'm not doing it today. I know I'm gonna end up doing it. This is where I'm like, guys, just like lie to me and say it'll look good so that I can just do it and get it over with. And then we can all hate it together and then I can let it grow up. But every time I say like, okay, I'm about to do it. And then I just get everyone responding with like, ew, you'll look ugly, don't. No, you gotta be my hype man. Hype me up. Be like, yes, cut those freaking bangs. Cause then I'll do it. And then it'll be funny and you can laugh at it and we can all enjoy it together. But if I say I'm gonna do it, and then you guys are like, don't do it, that's disgusting. Like, come on. Um, anyway, I'm going to my brother's house tomorrow um, for his little, we're doing like a little birthday celebration. I have not seen my brother, my sister-in-law and their kids in such a long time. Um, but we've all been quarantined for the appropriate amount of time. And um, we were waiting because Eric was working so much on Good Trouble, but he had a couple weeks off. So it's been two weeks since he worked. So it's been two weeks since he was on set and around other people, even though they're very, very, very safe on set. Uh, it's still, you know, just be doubly safe 
we want to make sure. So we waited two weeks and my parents, we want to see my parents. And I had um, that one play date, but we were wearing masks and we're outside and we were socially distanced and that was it. So we are good to go, they're good to go. So we're gonna go play with them tomorrow. Flynn's gonna hang out with his cousins. I get to see my family. My eyes look really red. I've been rubbing my eyes. So I haven't been crying, even though it really looks like it. I've just been rubbing my eyes. My eyes are itchy. Well, I'm a mess, guys. I need to shower and go to bed. No. Did I even film Flynn today? I'm like, Curious, I don't even know. I filmed so many Miranda videos today that now I'm like, what did I film for the vlog? I don't even remember. Okay guys, a song just got stuck in my head that is so good. Uh, it's from the movie Enchanted, which is really an incredible film. And I don't think it's talked about enough. I remember loving, I haven't seen it in a very long time, but that one song, the happy working song gets stuck in my head all the time. And I'm scared to sing it because I feel like this video is just gonna get demonetized if I sing even a millisecond of it. It's so cute. Maybe if I hum it, it won't. <laughs> okay, this that was not even a song. Come on, that's so cute. I feel like I'm gonna get demonetized for that, but I think it's cute. I love that song. I wanna like go watch that movie right now. Um, I feel like I had so much to talk to you guys about and I don't remember anything I wanted to say, but I'm very excited to go see my family tomorrow. I think we're gonna plan, and another thing you guys said for like, what makes you feel nostalgic about my vlogs the last year, because we're doing like nostalgia week and I don't think I did anything nostalgic today. I mean, I filmed a bunch of Miranda videos. Is that, no, it's not. Is you guys are like, oh, the themed days. We like the themed days. And so I think I'm gonna plan a themed carnival day. I did it last year and it was so fun. We made cotton candy and we had little carnival games. Flynn would be so into it now. So I think I wanna to try to do that. Uh, I'm going to import this footage and I'm gonna go. That's pretty much it. I hope you all had a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with my family. It's gonna be so fun. Okay, bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.